Hello everybody and welcome to Educating Animal Trivia. Today our trivia theme is invertebrates and if you don't know what that means, you will soon. As always, we're going to have 10 questions that are all multiple choice or true or false. After each question, I'll give you guys a couple seconds to pause the video so you can discuss and then we'll talk about the correct answer. So let's not waste any time, let's jump right in. We're going to jump right into our first question of our invertebrate trivia with number one. Invertebrates are animals that do not have what? A, hair, B, bones, C, eyes, or D, legs. Invertebrates are animals that don't have what? Go ahead and take a moment to pause the video and then we'll discuss. Okay, even though the jellyfish that we're looking at on the screen do not have hair, bones, eyes, or legs, only one of these is the characteristic that makes them an invertebrate. And that is that they do not have any bones at all. So an invertebrate is an animal that has no bones, but a vertebrate is an animal that has a skeleton or does have bones. So of course, humans have bones. If everybody reaches around and you feel on your back, we have this big backbone that runs all the way from our head to the tip of our rumps. So we are vertebrates along with every type of mammal. So bears and walruses and all the mammals, all are vertebrates. Reptiles are another type of vertebrate. So all of the snakes, lizards, turtles, tortoises, crocodiles, and alligators all have bones. On the left here, we see a turtle shell. And if you look right down the middle, you actually can see the spine of the turtle and the ribs. So these ribs that you guys have here on your bellies, those, the ribs and the spine are actually what attach the turtle shell to its body. So sometimes in cartoons, we see turtles jumping out of their shells. That doesn't actually happen. And of course, on the right, we see the skeleton of a snake. They have a very long backbone and all those little bones sticking off are their ribs. Birds also have bones. Typically, bird bones are hollow. This allows them to fly and be really lightweight. Frogs and salamanders and all amphibians have bones as well that, again, are usually pretty light. And our last group of vertebrates are fish. So fish are also animals with bones. But we're not talking about vertebrates today. We are talking about invertebrates. So let's test our knowledge already with number two. Which animal below is not an invertebrate? So we're asking which animal is not an invertebrate? A, a spider. B, a honeybee. C, a sea star, or D, a mouse. So we are looking for the animal that does have bones, the one that is a vertebrate. Go ahead and discuss. Okay, so which of these animals is not an invertebrate? Spiders, honeybees, and sea stars all have one thing in common. They are invertebrates, which means the correct answer here is D, a mouse. And since mice are vertebrates and they're warm blooded and they're covered in hair, they are a mammal. And we just said that all mammals have bones. All mammals are vertebrates. All right, number three, monarch butterflies are one of just a few species of insects that migrate. True or false? Now, you might have to talk a little bit about what the word migrate means. So go ahead, take a minute to discuss that and figure out if you think this is true or false. Okay. 
So typically when we think of animals that migrate, for me, the first animal that comes to mind right away are birds. We know usually birds fly towards the equator for the winter where it's a little bit warmer, but animals move from place to place for many different reasons, usually based on the season, and that's what we call migration. And monarch butterflies are one of just a few species of insects that migrate. So this is true. The monarch butterflies that are born way up north that come out, they start their lives, of course, as a caterpillar. And then if the season's right, when they turn into an adult, they fly thousands of miles across the entire United States, all the way down to Mexico, where they gather in groups of millions of butterflies. The trees are so covered in monarchs that it looks like the butterflies have replaced the leaves. So this is a very special thing that monarch butterflies do. They're one of the only insects that have a two-way migration. Okay, number four, moving on to a different invertebrate, the earthworm. Earthworms play an important role in the environment by eating dead material and adding nutrients back into the soil. We call them A, carnivores, B, decomposers, C, herbivores, or D, helpful. Take a moment to discuss. Okay, so earthworms, their diet is mostly dead stuff that's accumulated in the environment. So when leaves or flowers fall off of trees or if an animal passes, eventually the worms come in and they eat all that stuff. And when they go to the bathroom, they deposit all those nutrients back into the soil. And animals that do this, we give them very special names. We call them decomposers, and earthworms are not the only decomposers that exist. Snails are decomposers. They like to eat all of that old dead stuff as well. Fungi, many types of mushrooms are also decomposers. They help break down all that dead matter on the floor. Look at all these dead leaves around in this photo. That's great for the fungi and for the environment. Crabs are also decomposers. When they're scurrying around the ocean floor, they might be eating any dead stuff that they come across. So they too are decomposers. Decomposers are not just up on land. These other words that we had in our question, a carnivore, this is gonna be like a shark or a lion, are meat eating animals. C, herbivore, that's going to be like an elephant or a giraffe, our plant-eating animals. And I guess D was kind of true because earthworms are very helpful. Without decomposers, we'd have a hard time recycling nutrients back into the soil. Number five, many species of bees use their blank to protect themselves and to lay eggs. A, a stinger, B, their stripes, C, their wings, or D, their legs. Go ahead and take a minute to discuss. Okay, so let's not forget that there are many, 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 many types of bees. And for many species, only the females have stingers because the stingers are not only used to protect themselves from danger, or to protect their colony, but they're also used to lay eggs. They're what we call an ovipositor because we love to give things in science fancy names. So bees will use that stinger to protect themselves and when it comes time to lay their eggs. Moving right along to number six, which item is not an example of how insects and arachnids are different? Which is not an example? A, arachnids have eight legs while insects have six legs. B, some insects have wings 
while no arachnids have wings. C, insects are invertebrates while arachnids are vertebrates. D, insects have antenna while arachnids do not. This is a tough one, go ahead and talk about it. Okay, so a lot of times when we think of bugs, we kind of generalize all bugs, right? Whether we're talking about an ant or a beetle or a spider or a scorpion, we sometimes just call them all bugs. But insects are true bugs and arachnids are not, they're a little bit different. So the thing on this list that is not true is C. Insects are invertebrates while arachnids are vertebrates. Arachnids are invertebrates just like insects. All insects and arachnids are invertebrates. When we look at the rest of the things on this list here, we're gonna use a grasshopper as an example for our insect. Insects are animals like grasshoppers and butterflies and beetles and ants and bees who all have six legs they typically have antennas, though sometimes they're kind of small. And there are many types of insects that have wings, like this grasshopper and butterflies and dragonflies all have wings. Arachnids are animals like spiders and scorpions. Spiders and scorpions have eight legs instead of six. No arachnids have antenna that is strictly an insect thing and some other groups but not arachnids and there are no arachnids that have wings there are no flying spiders there are no flying scorpions which i think most of us could probably be very grateful for okay that was a tough one let's move on to number seven we're going back to the ocean number seven jellyfish are closely related to corals. True or false? Go ahead and discuss. All right, it's kind of interesting that we call them jellyfish because they are not fish. Remember at the beginning, we said that fish are vertebrates and jellyfish certainly do not have any bones. So. Even though we call them jellyfish, they are an invertebrate. And so are corals. And corals and jellies are part of the same grouping. They're very closely related, right? Along with sea anemones. These invertebrates have quite a bit in common, but one of those major things are those stinging cells. Of course, we would never want to bump into a jellyfish if we were swimming around in the ocean. They've got those long stinging tentacles that can certainly hurt quite a bit. They use those tentacles to both protect themselves and to help them collect food, to grab any tiny little organisms that are floating around in the water. Corals do the same thing, and so do anemones. So now these three animals, corals, jellies, and anemones are part of the same group. We call them nadarians. Okay, number eight, we're nearing the end here of our trivia. When sea snails die, their shells become new homes for who? For A, fish, B, hermit crabs, C, lobsters, or D, octopus. Go ahead and discuss. Okay, so sea snails spend their entire lives living inside of those shells. They use them for protection. When they die, those shells remain and they can be used by hermit crabs for protection. So as a hermit crab grows, they get bigger and bigger. They start to outgrow that shell and they need to go find a bigger shell so that they can move into it and continue to be nice and protected. And these shells that hermit crabs use for protection are from sea snails. 
Number nine, here we go. Crabs and many other invertebrates have a hard exterior called a blank that protects them and provides support. Is it called A, a spine, B, an exoskeleton, C, an inner skeleton, or D, a stinger? What do we call that hard exterior that crabs and other invertebrates have? Go ahead and discuss. Okay, this hard shell that crabs and lobsters and shrimp and all sorts of invertebrates have is called an exoskeleton. And exoskeletons are nice hard structures that typically as the animal grows, that exoskeleton grows as well. They actually will shed the outer layer of it and a new bigger exoskeleton will form underneath it and then harden and replace the old one. So of course for crabs, this not only helps protect their bodies, it kind of creates armor, but it also supports them. So they're not moving around like big blobs of jelly. Tarantulas and other spiders also have that hard exoskeleton. And so do shrimp and other crustaceans, of course, like crabs and lobsters. Okay, our final question of the day, number 10. Some octopus can change blank, making them experts at camouflage. What can they change? We're ending on a nice, easy one. A, their size. B, their species, C, their beak, or D, their color? Go ahead and discuss. Okay, there's no surprise here. Most octopus can change their colors. And this makes them experts at camouflage, at hiding in plain sight. However, did you know that not only can an octopus change their color, they can also change their texture. So in this little video, you can see how this octopus is becoming bumpy and prickly, just like that organism that it's grabbing onto. We can see it again in this little video. It takes on the same color and the same texture as those rocks where it's hiding. So this way, if you're a predator, you're going to have a really hard time finding that octopus. Ooh, you guys, that was a tough one today. Who knew there were so many different types of invertebrates around the world? Thank you guys so much for joining me for trivia today. I hope you learned a couple new things along the way. If you want to do trivia live with me or one of our other zoologists and maybe a few of our live animals, be sure to check the description below and we'll see you guys soon.